Hi everyone, and welcome to House of Vining. I'm Ivy, and I have a really cool technique for sewing darts that I'd like to show you. If you're already a reasonably experienced sewist, you may be thinking, I know how to sew a dart. You just fold the fabric and stitch on the line. And while that is essentially how it's done, I'm a firm believer that there's always a way to make something even better. So today, I'm going to introduce you to an elevated method of sewing darts, and it's pretty wild, so be sure you hang in until the end. But first, let's have a speedy review on a more basic or standard method of dart sewing. There's nothing wrong with this method, and if you're a total beginner, it may still be a good place to start. If you mark the stitch line with transfer paper, then you're all ready to go. But if you marked the drill hole with either an awl or a tailor tack, then you'll still want to come in and mark the actual stitch line in relation to the drill hole marking. I have my drill hole marked with a tailor tack. I actually have two of them as this bodice has two darts, one at the waist and one at the shoulder, but I'll be focusing on the waist dart for this demonstration. The drill hole marking for a dart is always placed half an inch before the vanishing point, which is the tip of the dart. So if this is my drill hole marking, I need to locate the actual vanishing point, which is the part where your stitch line ends, half an inch beyond the drill hole. So to mark this, I'll take my ruler, and I want it to be aligned with the center of the dart excess, which is usually a little pointed shape between the two notches, as well as being aligned with my drill hole. And while my ruler is at this angle, I'm going to measure half an inch beyond the drill hole. This point right here, half inch past the drill hole, is the actual vanishing point of the dart. And now I can draw the dart legs by connecting the vanishing point to both of the notches down below. As for the sewing, you may already know how to sew a dart by going like this. We fold the fabric, bringing the right sides together matching the notches at the bottom of the dart, as well as having our fold pass through the vanishing point. Then we pin in place along the dart leg marking. Begin sewing on your dart leg marking at the notches with a back stitch. Continue toward the vanishing point of the dart. You never want to backstitch at the tip of the dart because it usually ends up a little messy and causes the dart tip to pucker from the outside. So when you're almost at the end, reduce the stitch length to one millimeter to avoid the need for backstitching. Knot the threads if you'd like for added security and clip the threads with a half inch remaining. So that's all fine and great, but what if you turn your dart over and your stitch line doesn't fully align with your marking? Or what if you want the inside of your garment to look perfect as well, or are working with a sheer fabric, and those little thread tails at the tip of the dart just don't cut it for your standards? To solve the problem of the dart legs not accurately matching up, try this trick to base the dart legs together before stitching at the machine. Begin by threading a hand sewing needle, and I have a pretty large dart, so I have a very long piece of thread that's doubled over without a knot at the end. We're gonna be sewing sort of a ladder stitch across the dart leg markings. I wanna have the wrong side of my fabric with my marking facing up. And I'll begin down at the first notch on one of the dart legs, about a quarter of an inch from the edge of the fabric. I'll put my needle into the fabric, cross over the dart excess underneath, and come up at the other dart leg, also about a quarter of an inch from the edge of the fabric, just like this. Pull the thread through and just leave a few inches of excess hanging out at the end. And from where your thread came up, move forward on that dart leg about a half inch, go into the fabric, underneath the dart excess again, and come up on the other side, also about a half inch from the first stitch on this dart leg. Now we're just gonna repeat this stitch, working our way all the way up the length of the dart. I keep advancing forward on each dart leg about a half inch, and as I cross over to the other side, my goal is to be crossing over as straight as possible. 
and also keeping the length of these stitches that are visible as even as possible. Now, as we get closer to the vanishing point of the dart, here's where I'm gonna start to make my stitches that are moving forward a little bit shorter than the same half inch we've been using. That way we can squeeze a few more of them in before reaching the tip of the dart. And right as you're about to finish at the vanishing point of the dart, you want your last stitch to be at the actual vanishing point. I'm bringing my needle up at the vanishing point, but if you wanna go down to finish at the vanishing point, that's fine as well. So I'll just pull this through. And as we look at the wrong side of our fabric, we should see these stitches advancing forward on each of the dart legs. And flipping over to the right side of the fabric, you wanna have these horizontal lines that are as close to parallel as possible. Now, here's the moment of truth, here's the fun part. I'm just gonna grab both ends of my thread and pull, and it will pull up the dart excess while also perfectly matching up my dart legs. And this is gonna better position us to sew the dart with ultimate accuracy. For our elevated dart sewing, we're going to use a trick called continuous thread sewing. To start, remove the upper thread from the needle. Bring your bobbin thread up through the presser foot and thread it backwards through the needle. My machine requires threading the needle from left to right, so I'll bring the bobbin thread from the right to the left. Most typical home sewing machines thread from the front of the needle to the back, so you would thread your needle from the back to the front. Use a handheld needle threader if you need additional help with this. Next, tie the bobbin thread to the upper thread. Raise the presser foot so that the machine's tension discs are not engaged and the thread will pull freely. Rewind the excess thread from the top of the machine, pulling the knot upwards. Try to envision the length of the dart you're sewing and retract the knot upwards by at least this distance. Make sure the thread is coming up straight from the bobbin with no excess. We'll be sewing the dart from the vanishing point to the notches, which is opposite of the standard method. Lower your needle directly into the starting point at the fold catching as little fabric at the fold as possible. Begin sewing the dart without backstitching. Sew the length of the dart, finishing with a backstitch at the notches. Go ahead and remove the basting stitches too. We now have a beautifully sewn dart with no thread ends at the vanishing point. Notice how it's just a single continuous thread sort of wrapping around the fold of the fabric. Full disclosure though, the only downside to this method is that you do have to re-thread your machine in this bizarre manner for every dart that you have to sew. Because once you've cut the threads at the end of your dart, you no longer have that closed circuit of thread anymore. A dart is never complete until it's also been pressed, so let's quickly go over that. First, just press over the top of the stitches being sure to not press anything past the tip of the dart as it'll create a visible fold. Vertical darts should have their excess pressed toward the center of the garment, while horizontal darts have their excess pressed downward. Press the dart excess in the desired direction using a tailor's hand to keep the dart's three-dimensional shape and not create folds around the tip of the dart. Try to also not bring the iron over the fold of the dart excess because it can press an impression of that fold through to the outside. The goal is to end up with a smooth, rounded dart tip that's also free of any puckers or circular press lines. And here it is. It may not have been the fastest dart ever, but it sure is sexy. Let me know in the comments below if there are any other basic sewing techniques that you'd like to see elevated, and please consider subscribing to my channel so you'll be the first to catch any new technique or project videos as they're released. Keep making amazing things. I'll see you next time.